those babies. Yeah. Well, no. if we're going to save that. Okay. Again, might have we might have done this last time. But I was after I sent you that biochar Cody's lab video. Oh, you know, yeah. I was yeah, watching yeah. some more Cody's lab. Nice. And he does one that I think got taken down, but he does one where he um, refines. Mm, maybe not ref refine might not be the right word, but he takes a chunk of rock, uranium ore. Oh. Or some chunk of rock with a uranium in it. And nice. And goes through this really long process to get like a little, like smaller than a pea sized pellet of uranium metal nice metal very nice all right it was cool that would be it cool. was a long yeah. video and there was a lot of chemistry in it yeah and uh, not speaking a language it was sort of lost on me but right you know, oh this does this this does this i'm pouring this in here for that pouring this in here for that but it reminded me well so these are my only ideas like we could do and we've probably talked about it before you know, I always get frustrated with uh, the fact that most people walk around and don't really even ask what words mean. <laughs> True. What's a metal? You know. Oh. Sorry. What's a salt? Right. Okay. Especially if you're a chemist saying this is a something something salt. Right. Or this is an alkaloid metal. Right. right. So, and we've talked about metallicity in like the astrophysics sense. Yeah. Right? The it's pretty stars. much everything but hydrogen. Hydrogen <laughs> and helium. Yeah. So that's a weird usage of the word yeah so we could either do what's a metal or what's a salt or <laughs> this other one which would probably be boring too but um you know what's a bean a bean what's a seed oh what's damn. a grass oh well i'm not really are these not bad questions no they're good questions uh i'm not really i probably get it wrong if i tried to get into any detail like i have a vague outline and could polish it up but um more or less though learning those terms properly become is the beginning of the trade for any chemist or biologist mm -hmm. so it's just that simple at a certain point, which is why those introductory biology and chemistry classes are so mind numbing, especially because they do it at eight o'clock in the goddamn morning because you're they're, They don't, I, I don't, I don't know if there is a better way to go about it beyond like visual aids of actually like drawing out trees, trees right. you know, here's the final map at the end of this course, you're going to know what an amine and a carboxylic acid and an ester and an ether and all these other things are going to be. Wait, are those actual oh, chemistry yeah. terms? Oh, absolutely. Esters and ethers? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So they they trickle down into the common knowledge, but it means something very specific. Right. Within the field. That's the funny thing. Like, yeah. The botanist is going to have a different mm -hmm. understanding of what. I mean, we you know, the word vegetable, for instance. Yep, right? exactly. And common, you Did know, you know folk, tomato is a fruit? Exactly. You know, a vegetable? Folk taxonomy. I yeah. mean, it, maybe that's not the right word, but, but you know, it, common taxonomy yeah. versus like, oh, you know, what's a bug? Well, we, all, we all call things bugs. Some people might even call a worm a bug. Right, exactly. <sighs> but then if I'm an entomologist, oh, there are bugs, and yeah. then there are you got to be bugs. hemiptera. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, in some way, you know, like it's – we could get into it, but there's almost no point be because there there is no topic. It's like talking about physiology. Yeah, you know yeah, what's that's what a, I was afraid of. What's a fenestra and yeah, on a skeleton? What and what's of. a eventually? You know, it's a it's a you have to have a one to one correlation with your language so that when you say the word, you know what it means. And it get and in chemistry, it gets to the point like the actual name an actual chemical eventually parses out one, one, two, three, buta, butadiene, things like that. You can draw the chemical out on paper based on the name itself. Oh, when neat. You actually know it. yeah. And it's the IU pack. So it's I, like an actual um, formal, in a way, like a yeah. formal language or code. Yeah, it's it's as real as like a mathematical thing because the one, one means whether it's cis or trans, which side of a double bond it's on and whatnot. So... I hate to bring that topic to a screeching halt, <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> a mean, dead end, but 
Yeah, I mean, so salts are usually what ionic solids where you have something from an alkali metal, the first line, sodium, potassium, with combined with something from the other end of the periodic table, they swap an electron. Sodium chloride, lithium fluoride, potassium chloride. They're very reactive when they're all on their own, so pure sodium metal, but boy, it loves to just lose an electron and then it happily pairs up with something else that needs exactly what it has to give. Like on the other coast yep. of the table? Yep. And they meet They meet in the middle. You could say they meet in the middle or they, they bend around. They, they circum... <laughs> they meet on... I'll catch you on the flip side. I really want to get rid of my electron. You really want that electron. And so we couldn't be happier or more stable. And then there's salts? Yep. That's a salt for you, roughly, more or less. And then, you know, the definition gets fuzzy at the edge, you know? carbonate salt okay what the fuck is that sodium carbonate i don't know but it it's there it's really quite remarkable that i got a good example is um uh, in the ursula k Le Guin's earth sea series oh, yeah that was sitting yeah you were sitting on one of them i almost wondered <laughs> like, tales of earth sea. take home or? if you want sure they're short stories. Ah. It's not that that's that's uh, an, an appendices there. It's a collection of short stories. Because this is, yeah, but in, something. I mean, Ursula K. Le Guin has come up before. Yeah, uh, she's very good. I, did it, did it even mugs maybe even? Yeah, yeah. I gotta get on that. She's she's one of the best, one of the greats. Uh, in her magic system in Earthsea magical spoken spells are the true name of something and mm -hmm. so you get to the point of where the whole world was spoken into existence and so the magic powers that mages have corresponds to knowing the true name of an object mm -hmm. or a body of water or a person or an individual human's name right and uh, you know they say uh, a, a person's true name is a word in the true speech mm -hmm. it's a word and it's it's uh discrete one-to-one -one correlation no no other human being has that true name and if you don't know their true name you can't put, put a spell over them right, right or change them and it's that way with every object in the universe they it, and so there's a science to the magic which she is excellent at hmm. and it takes place around a school that teaches this to young mages to control their power and whatnot and i remember vividly uh when i was first learning biology how fairly similar that is Hmm. You know, because you eventually memorize a map of Earth's major life forms in your head. And you get, it's like, when you study the insects, you start with the orders, which are huge. The beetles, the hemiptera, the butterflies, the caddisflies. That's, that's enormous. When you talk about the caddisflies, you're talking about thousands of species. And they have all these attributes, and they're quite different from the other insects. And if you know the name, eventually it's like, boom, boom, one-to-one. -one. Wow. You know their true name. Strepsiptera, the twisted-winged parasites. <laughs> Although, you know. But they have no free-living females. They live inside the bodies of other insects. If I saw one of those, it would be the closest thing to a miracle I would ever experience. Only the males live in external life. Whoa. They're so cool. It's an entire order, incredibly ancient. What are the what are they usually uh, who who are their most common hosts? Wasps, bees, butterflies, all sorts. Oh boy, something. turn about is fair play, wasps. Dude, <laughs> they're really something and they're everywhere. Probably you've probably been stung by a wasp that had one in it and they're invisible. Because the females only live inside and the males only exist in the outside world for a couple of days at best, sometimes only a couple of hours. And they have goofy eyes that look like trilobite eyes and they have these weird twisty wings. And the males don't even have mouth parts. They fly around and look for a female that's embedded in the body of a bumblebee. How do they see them? They smell them. Uh, of she course. sends out a signal. And then he, he impregnates her by in, like slicing into her head and injecting sperm that enters her body cavity itself. And then she'll erupt into all these babies. And how do the babies find other free-living insects? <laughs> so fucking cool. And it's just this thing. It's invisible. Again, people, you know, there's no common name for this type of insect. We have plenty of common names for wasps. Right, 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 right. Only right. scientific names for these because nobody fucking... You don't see them. You wouldn't them. look. You wouldn't see them. Yeah. And maybe every now and then, you know, how would, how would you, how would a, how would you if you're in ancient Greece, if you're Aristotle and he sees this one bug, this one time, once in his lifetime, he's never going to find a single other person to even talk about it to. 
maybe he'll get a written description. How'd we figure it out? We looked. Nature did it right in front of us. I don't know who first discovered Strepsiptera, but it, they, we probably haven't known about them for very long, relative, obviously, to other bugs we know all about. Right. It's, it's just incredible. And so, yeah, wait, the scientists, especially biologists, and especially the ones who know about small things, live in a different, slightly different universe than the average person. Right. I keep my eye out for Strepsiptera. Never seen one, probably never will. The only chance you really have is to get a vial of female pheromones and see if you can get a male. Or you collect a whole lot of wasps and look for the female poking her head out to breathe. From the body cavity? Mm -hmm. She's insisted inside. She's kind of like a tumor. Her bot, her technical meanwhile, body. Meanwhile, the host is still flying around, oh, yeah. bebopping. Doesn't kill, yeah, yeah. She's just passively absorbing nutrients. It's not a bad parasitism. It's not. It's until not that she's it, pregnant. Yeah, but even then, or, she can well, hatch her babies out uh, without killing the host, I think. Pretty huh, sure. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. She's hanging out, waiting for. Waiting for Romeo to bring a bouquet Romeo. of flowers yeah. and stab her in the head with his penis. <laughs> <laughs> what a life. Yeah. <laughs> Hyperparasitoids. Trigaloon. What? Trigonolid. Larva. Basically, not th Strepsiptera have this. Uh, and a, a few beetles have this as well. The young one of the stages of the larva so you, like you lay an egg and then it hatches out into something that maybe eats a leaf munches on it for sure. a while then it pupates into maybe something that's kind of like this little monster that has a couple hours to run around and go attach itself to a host kind of like the face hugger in the alien uh, franchise yeah, yeah. you know it itself doesn't have to do anything except find a host real quick otherwise it's going to die not no food source but it's right. this little this little demon scurrying around looking for a host well, and, I imagine and then it morphs into a passive like maggot type thing inside of the host oh, holy shit right well and i imagine too i mean again it's a numbers game right and yeah. the, the the margins are going to be yeah and the coefficients are going to be different for every parasitic species yeah like how many of them don't find hosts yeah exactly you know, like, it'd be vanishingly small the ones who probably do manage right. to find out but <laughs> enough of them they still exist yeah and they sit there and seemingly invisibly inside of ecosystems but maybe you know there's a book called parasite rex <laughs> and it's not a bad title because they'll sit there and modify host behavior right so what you think is normal is not i mean we've all you know we've all seen the cordyceps and uh yeah and we all know about the wasps and their ovipositors and yeah. then the babies eat the spider or yep. whatever yeah you know? yep and we know about those guys or the the what the barnacle what is it the barnacle the barnacle that parasi uh, parasitizes the the crabs yep wears it's the crab's body like a zombie puppeteering <laughs> again yeah again the extended phenotype here yep exactly it's really what? yeah if your <laughs> if your coding says do that, it's silly to think of where the barnacle stops and the crab puppet begins. Correct. Right. Yeah. Like our coding tells us to learn things and have big brains and also have fairly dext you know deft hands, and then we fly jet planes or drive cars. Yeah. And where does the car stop and my body begin? It hardly matters because yeah. there's the yeah. ur puppeteer, which is the the coding way in the sacrosanct, right? Yeah, in the cell's nucleus in the long run, sure. But, I mean, or we... Sac sacrosanctorum or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, it's... Somebody wants to write a book called, like, The Nature and Evolution of Human Institutions... Because you think, I mean, it's very easy to see uh, ecosystems in terms of like, oh, well, the plants evolved to be more efficient at photosynthesis over time. And the herbivores evolved to be more efficient at eating plants over time. Okay, all well and good. 
But think of how less sophisticated that is than these parasite arms races, you know, chemicals versus chemicals. And you think like, well, how sophisticated is a barnacle? Well, if you're talking about a saccharina, one that's invading crabs, pretty fucking sophisticated genetically. If, you, if you're going to sit there and pace out like, okay, so the barnacle hatches, it swims around, uh, Nopolis larva, it has to look for a crab it has to crawl, when it finds one, crawl along the crab, find a weak spot, a joint in the armor, uh, not an actual break, but a thin spot in the exoskeleton, and then it molts. And the act of molting, it injects its body into the crab. It, it leaves, it's, it's turned the... It's, it's, it's some Buffy the Vampire or yes. the sci-fi fantasy shit. Like, you're... Yes. you're possessing yeah and it grows like and its body looks like a fungus by the time it's in the crab but genetically it's just a barnacle it doesn't have a brain it doesn't look like a barnacle doesn't look like a barnacle uh, you know uh there's species of barnacles that kind of do that it doesn't have a body anymore oh wait except it does yeah. it looks like a crab now it stole a, it stole a crab's body that is the crab's body damn huh how do you think that uh, relationship evolved? Well, there would be barnacles living on crabs, free, but just filter feeding, right? And then maybe one day one of them had a mutation that let it drill, that dissolved some of the crab's shell, and then the nutrients started flowing from the crab into the barnacle, and that barnacle had a whole lot of babies. And they all carried the gene for that chemical, that enzyme that dissolved the crab. That got them in there. Yeah. But that's got, step one. That's just step one. But you can see once that ratchet starts turning, click, 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 click. Now you have fucking saccharina taking over a crab, castrating male crabs and making their bodies more female. Yeah, I've said this before, but these are the these parasites are the guys that always make me rethink intelligent design. <laughs> It, you know, you it would, it should but actually, it should make long. you pause. Yeah, but, yeah. There are species of barnacles one, that do that to the sharks. The first one doesn't puppet the crab. Correct. The first one's just slightly more successful because it got inside. Yeah. That has to happen. I don't even want to say a number, but has to happen a bunch more times. Have you heard of whale barnacles? Uh, the barnacles that live on whales. I've seen them. On sure. the movies. Yeah, yeah. You know. they ne there's species of barnacles that live just on whales. How long is it going to be before evolution finds a barnacle that sends its Ooh, bloodstream whale down? whale puppet. Dude. <laughs> terrifying <laughs> to think about. A barnacle in the captain seat of a whale. Yeah. That's so funny. It'd be like uh, <laughs> Plankton, the Plankton guy in SpongeBob when he like gets the harness. <laughs> move the fins. Move the fins, <laughs> goddammit. There's krill over there. Ah, go get him. A barnacle. Does he get an Puppeting a whale. Something? Yeah. And that whale would be all sickly and infested and spewing out all these babies wow. that are infesting other whales. Kind of, but it doesn't Jesus. necessarily have to be sickly, right? You were telling me the it wouldn't the, it? maybe the not twisted the uh, twisted wingers. Yeah, it might eventually, but I mean, if you think think and of bumblebees the bumblebees still flapping around, right, right, right. But think of the think of the ratio of biomass of humpback whale to barnacle. If there's only one in there, maybe they would compete multiple times. Maybe they would fight in. Maybe two different barnacles would fight inside the body of the oh, whale. Yeah, right. I don't like to think about that, but <laughs> because there are species of like deep sea, like dogfish sharks that are get infested by barnacles and it castrates them. It chemically castrates them. Wow. The barnacles, it, it looks like a tumor kind of on the outside of it. And it's usually along the spine. And it's like, what the fuck is this? And it's a barnacle and uh, it's uh, feet used to filter feed are very atrophied. They just kind of dangle out there. Because it sends in roots, like a cancer cell kind of angiogenesis, into the body of the shark. Damn. Gross, right? That's Parasites. That's gnarly, gnarly. So how long... So it wouldn't happen in the whales first. I mean, just Occam's razor would say, well, what's already more adapted to infesting the body of a vertebrate? The one that's already doing it in a shark or some brand new barnacle that's free living? Well the one already doing it in the shark, so that it would be a species jump. Mm, the barnacles would start being able to infest whales. I hope it doesn't happen. It probably eventually will. Well, 
so long as there are still whales to infest. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> we might preempt that. But yeah, and so you think of, I mean, to make just, we could, I mean, we could, we could make this about mind parasites too, or just keep it with ecosystems, because I mean that's cool enough as it is. But I mean. Human beings are not DNA. DNA simply makes human beings. But you look at look at how far our minds have gone in such an incredibly short period of time. A lot of it has to do with parasitic mental constructs that just take a life of their own and eventually start puppeting human beings. Well, that's Dawkins again, right? He's yeah. the extended phenotype guy. Yeah, he's extended. But also and also the one who coined the term meme. He coined maybe? the term meme. Yeah. 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 So. so it's really, I mean, it's, you think of the world you inhabit and how far removed that is, even just from a basic biological existence, you know. Think of how many different things you think about that seem so real on the surface. Like, uh, think about how many, maybe probably once a day, maybe you think about the Roman Empire, something that you'll never actually experience you were never there and the actual reality of life on the ground was probably you know people think it'd be very exciting it'd be incredibly boring for an american because there's no screens to look at <laughs> and you're all farmers you wake up if you're you farm, lucky if you're very lucky yeah if and you're you, lucky there's no electric lights people you'd go you'd be like wow i'd love to go back in time to rome so what? So you could fucking cook over a stove if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and go to sleep, and at night it's just pitch fucking black and, and quiet as the grave, right? Do they have oil lamps? Yeah, yeah they had oil yeah. lamps, right? This, was, this isn't really a, a good a jumper, but I uh, was watching old Twilight Zone episodes. There's uh, the one I hadn't remembered seeing before. Um, you know, Rod Serling comes on and he has, I mean, he, he's a great writer. I just love his little intros and outros. Yeah. Oh, it's totally. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Um, if I ever learn how to make, you know, lo-fi hip hop, I'm just going <laughs> to throw Rod Serling voiceovers totally. on top of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that, and, that and old episodes of X-1, which is an old radio show that did uh, <laughs> sci-fi radio plays, many of which were written by some of our, you know, some of the canonically great uh, sci-fi authors oh. who were writing, you know, short stories and shit that were adapted, and sometimes, I think probably even they did the ad adaptation. Anyway, um, so you know, it opens on like, oh, here's an old woman very far away from everybody. And like, you sort of get the idea; it's sort of frontiersy. Oh, it's an old oh, woman this is by the one herself. With the little space. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. then the yeah. the turn at the end is like they're from they're from NASA. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, this giant, you know, abort, don't send any more, we're gone, Grisham's dead, I'm right. cooked, yeah. she wrecked our saucer, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I was just, it, completely unrelated to the premise of the episode, it made me wonder, like, as a, I don't even know what time period I'm thinking of or that the episode portrayed, but she had oil lamps. Oh, yeah. But also you got the impression she was far away from infrastructure or right. a town or a shop and it made me wonder like yeah. is that one of those things you trade for or i mean because obviously you can grow root vegetables by yourself yeah maybe right you can eat this and that but do you can you process yeah well, can you process those. animal yeah they would have tallow and by tallow. yourself I, I i i don't know it, it the Romans had a lot of olive oil, and they would burn it in their lamps. Okay, too. gotcha, so gotcha. It was, yeah, it wasn't pig fat, or no, I mean, it, maybe, but you probably ate the pig fat. But you can also eat olive oil. Too. Ah, right. I mean, there were, you know, they tried to recreate a Mediterranean economy kind of in the British Isles, which is insane. And so there's like olive oil lamps in <sighs> Roman Britain. You know, so <laughs> not growing the olives there. <laughs> Jesus. We had to ship that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and that's a gross oversimplification. But I guess that the, the point I was making is like, we, you know, it's, isn't it interesting that so many people know what to think about Rome? Right. And it, 
just ain't so. Speaking of mental parasitism and and whatnot, it's I I wonder. Right, it's a meme. Yeah, it, it it's doesn't, a meme. and it doesn't have much relation to the actual thing. Yeah. But that's not important, right? We're right. I mean, I was just listening to Alan Moore and his sort of oh. idea, uh, his conception of what magic is. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll pr- paraphrase it terribly, but I think it makes some sense because it doesn't, um, it really doesn't offend my sort of <laughs> sensibility. My, yeah, sort of material. Uh, oh, yeah, like it, it's, it's, Magic is anything that sort of happens inside your mind or anything that changes what happens inside your mind, right? Fair enough. So, you know, not unrelated to Dawkins' idea of the meme. Um, yeah. Or or or, a, or, a, or an infectious meme. You know, ideas are sticky. You know? Yeah. The Holy Roman Empire, you know? Yeah. The Catholic Church. Or, or, or even Rome, right? There's the historical version of Rome. Yeah. I don't know if it's – on the one hand, it's, you know, it's good to think about things as best we know, how they happened. On the other hand, the thing – the version that exists in people's brains collectively yeah. has more potency than the actual the, thing that might have happened in the yeah, universe. The long dead. At, at least now. Yeah. Well, and it's – I it's that's maybe not true, but yeah, for our well, you know, purposes I, I, as dumb dummies who live, you know, and are the subject to infectious memes. Yeah, and the way I one way to really the cool thing about Rome specifically, as far as memes go, is that it's an infinitely flexible political social system so that anybody trying to justify any course of action today can always find an antecedent (laughs) in rome so if you want to do evil you have a certain interpretation if you if you want to be aggressive militarily and you want to go plunder somebody's land you have justification in what the romans did and if you want to be peaceful you can do the same thing and if you anything any yeah, single this, thing it's it's a it's a it's a solution to all problems any problem well and can't, that can't be the only example of that because that's mm-hmm. um local to our s- spiritual inheritance yeah exactly our, as we- vaguely westerners right? yeah speaking of parasitic memes and so it that's what i find really kind of funny uh, especially about Americans of all people, a Germanic, mongrel, colonial, very young society sitting there being like, we're the new Romans. It's <laughs> like, no, you're fucking not. Um, and it's and what a coincidence that the people who are very anxious to inherit that mantle, to throw it on their own shoulders, are people who are aggressive militarily and whatnot. Right. Even though Rome, at the height of the empire, was really quite peaceful and static at its borders. Isn't there something people, isn't there actually a, 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 isn't there a, a term phrase? about that? Yeah. Isn't that, I don't even know what it means, but uh, I've heard it before. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you know? You know, and, but then also they were also hideously aggressive in the late Republic and other times. And there, and when you really think about it to even say they is totally, fucked you're already, up. you've already, You've pissed you're in the already water. not yeah, yeah you're already not even wrong basically yep. <laughs> yeah yeah say they yeah and so yeah cuz nobody cares about what the hittites did do they nobody says well you know Supi Lulima, he they show up in the do the hittites show up in the bible yeah but it's all fuck yeah. it's all fucky they're not the actual hittites right. it's really weird right. that's where i've heard of them mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah nobody cares nobody nobody's like well Mercialist did this, and so therefore I get to also invade Mesopotamia. But, uh, you know, again, like, <laughs> it's also... Boom! It's also, <laughs> <laughs> it's also sort of like it doesn't... If it, if it wasn't that, it'd be something else. Exactly. You know, that's it happens a, to be that. That's the point I'm making, actually, yeah, because yeah. the Romans also looked to the past for justification, and they thought they were 
young. You know? I mean, if I were, well, I don't know, not to always do the, what's the only two places I can think of? Rome and China. <laughs> but like, there's a good contrast. I just, the sort of like, and I don't know n- n- anything about Chinese history or mythology, but it, watching a lot of Kung Fu movies and occasionally jumping on Wikipedia, like I I've, I've always find it interesting, like these, um, it's not quite the same way that we lionize and mythologize our founding fathers. Yeah. It's a little different. It is. But like, oh, this historical figure <laughs> who did exist, who was a historical person, but then also somehow sort of enters like an actual spiritual pantheon. Yeah. You get little figurines. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, agiographies, right? Of course, there's always agiographies. Uh, right. I mean, same, like, again, that, that, that part is consistent. Like we tell silly stories about Abraham Lincoln chopping right. down or George Washington yeah. doing this or that. Um, but like the, <laughs> yeah, like their historical generals or political leaders in various yeah. dynasties or eras sort of seem to be pulled forward. And also, I don't know, deified in a different way. I mean, we, yeah. everyone does it, I guess about their, their his, importantly so. historical uh, important historical figures but right. it seems like a little bit different like oh uh i can't even pull any names out but you know you watch kung fu movies about legendary generals and legendary i think is the right word they, yeah. this was a historical person who this Cao Cao. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly this character then this person then morphs into a a character or a almost a God or yeah, Yuan Guang or whatever. He's really yeah. It's I mean I've been reading Romance of the Three Kingdoms and <laughs> right. And again, you know, we do that too. Oh you know, yeah, we do. Jefferson was like this, but yep. but we don't. Well, that one time we had like that movie about Abraham Lincoln killing zombies or something. That's like the closest we've ever gotten, I think. But also, you can't even compare it because oh, two hundred years, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this guy lived <laughs> two thousand in five hundred forty. You know, yeah. won a few battles. Yeah. And I mean, now it's... you could buy a porcelain figurine of him if you wanted. Put yeah. him on your altar, maybe. And it's kind of. I mean, to think of, like to redefine instead of saying, well, you popped into existence and then you had lots of ideas about reality as if you were ever a blank slate, you know, um, replace that instead with like you're like any other gene or piece of information and a collection thereof that's been rolling around uh Evolution doesn't have a sense of time in and of itself. There, there's no like, oh, it's the year 2020 according to the genes inside of a parasite inside of a bumblebee. It's, it, it's infinite. It's just happening. And only after the fact is there any so that ratchet. What do I mean? The ratch that ratchet of evolution, the click, the duration of time on the click is the same for all that tick. Tick, tick, yeah, the clock. Yeah, the has cl- the same. Yes. What's what's the quantum unit of the time clock then? Mutation frequency, you know, natural selection acting on what's there, you know. And so while evolution can make organisms and machines, it's cellular machines that are incredibly precise chronometers that allow seabirds to navigate and allow plants to very precisely time mm-hmm. how long the seeds will be dormant things like that in and of itself at the level of it, the gene if you're actually looking at the dna it doesn't know it's just a chemical you know it's just a chemical pattern and i think it's <laughs> yeah it's Once cra- again it's geometry <laughs> yeah um i think about that and i you know like the turn the way china approaches its history is quite different from the way western what we call western civilization approaches its history and so um it's very and, and necessarily so yes right yeah, of course of course it would be different they're just extremely different yeah yeah the yeah. one 
one can make the argue has yeah continuity this long and the that, other one suffered a few dark ages yeah we we had breaks in continuity and so the thing that has emerged is very very different and really bears no relation to rome you know we try you know oh okay we use the word senator but what the fuck it, it doesn't matter right and and you know we'll borrow yep we'll bo- you know borrow architecture for our yeah monuments yeah but it's dead architecture unlike chinese architecture which has had unbroken continuity for 4000 years um and i really do mean that, you know and it's just very you could say, you know, looking at the way, looking at the way uh, evolution is infinite and eternal, and that that click of the ratchet doesn't have any internal chronology. You know, it's just that same click, click, click. The the frequency of different genetic combinations, alleles. Uh, you know, it doesn't. Na- nature doesn't know or ca- nature doesn't know or care whether the barnacle is piloting a it. crab's body or it's just a barnacle filter feeding. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it has no qualitative analysis. One is not better than the other, right? I think about that and, I, in, and in terms of like history and if you say like, well, wait a minute. Okay, so what if, what if most young colonial barbarian societies look to the past a very specific way because that's necessary for their ecology it has nothing to do with who they look back to. It doesn't matter though. And they're inventing it essentially almost out of not out of whole cloth, but they might as well be right. It's arbitrary. Yeah. It's arbitrary. If, if that it's the Romans. Rome, it would, uh, yeah. It would have been something else. Right. Yep. Yeah. Because it was, that legacy was lost to Germanic invaders. And if it's the year 600 in Spain or France, modern day Spain, France, or England, it's like, um, <laughs> there's no lights at night. There's no cities really Oops. anymore. 600, 700. God. Well, what are they doing? The Catholic church is still there. So I, I, no, I well, am what are being... the invaders doing culturally? culturally looking back i mean are they doing something different yeah i mean if you look at like, like the merovingian court or whatever or like visigothic spain you're it's just kind of they have their own legacy germanic culture you know and they're like oh yeah these romans they're really cool and we're living in some of their former cities especially in spain but i mean if you're in england it, there's no writing there's no nothing it's just like Probably if you're in if you're in post Roman Britain, let's say it's six hundred, you know, they are look at they they are fighting each other and having a very primitive Germanic tie, style economy going on, and one chiefdom is fighting another in ruins, and they're saying, How, where did this come from? Giants, <laughs> giants built them, or fairies, or something. You know, it, that's what that's the problem with breaks in continuity. Hmm. And, and it's very difficult to talk about because there obviously was a Rome and there's a whole lot to learn about it and scholarship can do that and whatnot. But also at the same time, why it's so difficult to talk about Rome and why I'm willing to say that in some ways it's just a meme, especially in common culture, is that we are living in that break in continuity. There is, no, there is nothing we are doing that is a continuation of the Roman experiment at all. <laughs> at all. Right. Not remotely. We're not trying to bring back Latin, and we're right, not trying right, to right. recreate the political boundaries. It doesn't make sense. Right. It's over. It's a cargo cult or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll build this monument with some yes. columns that we think of as yes. Roman. It's a cargo cult, yeah. yeah. The U.S. Senate is a cargo cult. But there's nothing intrinsic or essential no. that is that has any sort of coherence with yeah. the thing we talk about. Yeah, yeah. In there's Mamet, you know, in meme land. Yep. It's just a meme. Oh yeah, that <laughs> uh, um, this yeah, Michael. I was mentioning this dude, Michael S. Jaja. He 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 sometimes uses the word iconosphere. I don't know if that's uh, interchangeable with meme land. <laughs> Not that anyone said meme land before, but right. Um, I mean, it's whereas the Chinese experiment is still ongoing. Like Confucius is still very relevant in China, and 
Marcus Camellius Furiosa. Well, what's not... the, what's the yeah? What's the difference between relevance and you know, if I asked, you know, my a friend or an uncle or a neighbor or somebody, they would tell me. Um, Madison and uh, Jefferson and yeah. George Washington are relevant. Yeah. Although, again, there's a scale problem there. Right. But right. Uh, you know. Because well, because those institutions that they helped build are they still relevant? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, there's still continuity. Jesus, right. you still have to follow procedural rules right. based on that. And like, but it's that's two hundred years of yeah relevance. Yeah. With our spiritual yeah memes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, our, founding our, fathers. Our, our, yeah. Our. Uh, legendary versions of historical people yep as opposed to <laughs> confucius that was Kong yeah. to was the yeah 600s bc you know oh crap i was gonna get that wrong yeah so it's yeah it's i mean it's very it it does oh. unfor what, what's unfor what's funny about it is we've made it matter you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> and that's <laughs> And it's like, guys, your yeah, look at that. your legitimacy, the legitimacy of the U.S. House of Representatives doesn't need Thomas Jefferson or Madison or whatever to give it to them. What what matters is the consent of the living people right now, and we can make whatever government we want. You're doing this to yourselves. Um, I always found that funny, and um, yeah. I mean, it's a trite point, and I'm sure people have made it before but like people who are worried about the intent of the authors yeah wait fuck them they're wait dead. a second why do we i thought we were trying to make decisions about how best to solve a problem yep why would you prioritize the intent the intent of somebody dead 200 fucking years ago i don't give a fuck but what yeah, sorry. It's, contrast like that, that. That that blows my mind. Yes, contrast they this. That. No, we were having a conversation about how to solve a problem. Yeah, yeah. What if if I'm flying you're an not airplane? Even talking about what might be better or worse. Yeah. But I thought that's what we were doing here. Yeah, I'm not beholden yeah. to what Thomas Jefferson <laughs> yeah. wanted. I don't give a fuck. If I'm flying an airplane and it's not working very well and we're going to crash into the goddamn mountain do i worry about the intent of the engineer who fucked up and put a put the wing on too short or the oh well he wanted it to oh, right, be this way right. no the navigator yeah i'm going to crash into a mountain the navigator charted the course into the mountain and said yeah. oh well the intent of the navigator was that we fly this direction yeah <laughs> what and wait i thought we were <laughs> trying to not crash into a mountain yeah as the, and who the fuck silly, do you think you're fooling? Your intent. Such a weird... The living intent of the person right now who is fobbing off responsibility onto a 250-year-old corpse saying, oh, no, this is what they wanted. It's not what I want. Fuck you. Then don't even – then then why are you a part of the conversation? Right, right. I'll just, I can read the Constitution myself. I, I know English, uh, and it was written in English. So who the fuck are you? Don't don't talk. Don't even talk to me. I'm talking to Thomas Jefferson. I'm not talking to you. Go away. Fuck that shit. You do not. The past does not justify anything we do, good or bad. It's here now. We the living. That's it. Long dead morons who are just as fallible as you or me, and maybe more so. Yeah who had not as much history to learn from, including their own dumb fuck mistakes. Jesus Christ. You know, I, that to me, that's the worst one. And that's the thing. We are, <laughs> you want to talk about a 250-year-old corpse? How about a 2,000-year-old one? Pull it, dragging the fucking Roman Empire out of its fucking coffin and flogging that goddamn thing to make it twitch one or more times. Well, Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hadrian. Yeah. Fuck off. You don't, and like, yeah, Marcus Aurelius thought flies uh, spontaneously grew out of meat. You know, I mean, maybe not. By Marcus that Aurelius time, sacrificed like, bulls uh, to the right, gods. Right. Okay. All right. Whew. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, like, it it, it 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 you can you can kind of i personally 
in my life have come full circle with the history thing because I went from like, oh, I'm a good boy. Oh, I want to I wanna be a good American. I believe in Western <laughs> civilization. And then I learned about it and went, oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> and then I had like the snarky phase of like, hey, hey it's bullshit. <laughs> and now I've come full circle because it was bullshit then too. Like the Roman, there were Romans who were like, Cato the Younger, Cato the Elder said this. And it's like, bro, it's the year 450. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. I don't care what yeah. <laughs> Cato the Elder thought because when he was around, it was a different world. Right. And right. we got to think about this now. You know, the, right. the vandals are coming up the River Tiber. So what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, um, it's it's good it's, to it's it's good to read, you know. It's good to know, but to also to remember. Yes, you have to honor the dead, but you have to let them live in their own time. <laughs> and that's the thing. That's what's so extraordinary about China because they're not the only ancient society out there. Don't get me wrong; there are many, many of them. Uh, uh, the Hopi in the American Southwest—they've never lost their history. Uh, they're sitting there watching us like, okay, you fucking morons. We were here thousands of years before you were. Hmm. Um, when you have continuity, you approach history differently. You're not allowed to bastardize it. And that's, that's why interesting. Although we're sitting there going, China, you don't agree with our version of progress. And they're like, we outlasted the Liao. And the Mongols, the Jurchen, and the Shuangnu, and the Japanese, we will outlast you. <laughs> you sound like Dracula. <laughs> I, it's that, yeah. The Lombards, the Bulgars, and we repelled them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what it is, you know, they're like, yeah, we've faced down barbarian coalitions before, and by you won't be there to criticize china for although much you longer. although you say oh you can't bastardize your history but uh, obviously the, yeah. it's inevitable that um, redaction yeah revision exactly. adaptation how do you do it how do you go it's about going doing? to take place i mean inevitably it, it, it we're humans that happens with our languages, I mean, if our languages change, then definitely our histories change, yes. right? So, or our, yeah, our take on them, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I take your point. Obviously, it's going to be a different flavor, of course, <laughs> if you haven't lost continuity. But the story you're telling in the year two thousand about the years from you know, 2000 BC to 1900, it's probably yeah. going to be a slightly different story than the story you're telling in the year yes. 1900. Yes. About the years between 2000 BC to exactly. 1900. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And that's why there's no truly objective version of history. Truly. Right. Well, you have yeah. to bring it Sorry in. Sorry I even made us go there. Obviously, we all knew that. So. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's, and that's strangely enough is why I, I really do think we, you need to have, and this is hard because, you know, a postmodernist could say, well, then where does your morality come from? But you have to, you have to teach people how to learn uh, history in a way that helps the better angels of our nature as well as we can define them. Mm. And yeah, you could, you could back me into a corner with like, that. So, how so, do you so, know? How do you know it's better? Right, right, sure. Okay. Well, yeah, That's there's fine. no knowing, yeah, of course. Exactly, and mm. I and I the and it's just borne out and it's but you results yeah. right. I don't you I don't know care them that. by their fruits. <laughs> yep, you can back me into that corner, and I'm fine with that. Like I know, I know, I'll never be, I'll never see Rome, the Roman Empire. I just did my best, you know. Right, but all yeah, that's an interesting like sort of a two two pronged approach. A it, Nice to do your best to be, you know, quote unquote, objective or historical. Yeah. B, also sort of recognizing that this is <laughs> impossible. A, impossible, <laughs> and B, uh, this is a a human artifice 
yeah. like any other yes. that can be used as a tool. History is a human creation. For better or worse, not to say, you know, that's too binary. Oh, it's a tool that can be used for good or evil. But yep. on the one hand, we do our best if we are indeed interested in being scholars or academics or historians yeah. to be, you know, rational and objective. On the other hand, um, realizing that like anything else, um, this human artifice, like any other human artifice, can be wielded to certain ends. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Here's one that struck me as a, as a very obvious parallel. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking two different things from thousands of years apart and I'm joining them, right? Uh, which we've done before on this talk. I mean, that's that's I I think that's one of the most superb things to do. It, like find the common human element. That, it's assault. Thing, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, hey, cool. <laughs> um, a lot of ancient militaries, especially in what we call the Middle Ages, but before and after, of course, uh, were not the the militaries were not paid. If you won the battle or the siege, you got to sack the enemy's camp or city, right? Mm -hmm. uh, surely you've heard of the Iraqi dinar scam? I've heard of it. Yeah. 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 So. It just sounds like something that yeah, old dumb dudes. Well, it's no coincidence that a lot of them are veterans of the Iraq war. Because they went over there and they exposed themselves to danger and yeah. worked real hard and probably didn't feel that they were recompensed enough for their go by their government, right? Sure. So, and I'm sure they weren't. No, they of course they weren't. <laughs> it was it was a disaster don't it, do for that. everybody. Don't yeah. do that to a. I mean, also don't do that to the other people. But yeah, yeah. So they go <laughs> no over, winners there. <laughs> they go to the other side of the planet and do. Could do a lot of harm for a few years or maybe a few months, and uh, then they go, I deserve more for this, and so I'm gonna buy a bunch of Iraqi dinars with American dollars because the dinars are very low value because Iraq is a mess, largely thanks to our meddling, uh, among others. You know, it's not the only reason, but I think we had something to do with it. Wait, what? So they buy, <laughs> they buy. So Iraqi dinars are priced at like 100,000 dinars to one U.S. dollar. Uh -huh. So you can buy dinars with U.S. dollars and, and then get, get them delivered to you, are you for getting, a fee. Are you getting coins or bills? Bills, or, yeah. 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 yeah I, I've looked into it. Chapo what? has a section on it. And what are they very, made of? Uh, it looks more like European currency. It's more colorful. This is a, it's a bill. This is a silly joke, yeah. but I've always thought, you know, you're, you're actually more rich if you have 100 ones than one 100 yeah because you could burn it yep you could you could plaster your wall with it plaster your wall <laughs> you could make a basket out of it yeah. i mean just the material yeah and it's, it's high i mean at least the american dollar you yeah know, that's 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 Tough. quite a that's quite a little material anyway yeah. you so, can roll it hundred thousand hundred thousand <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because and so they get this, and what they do is go. Oh, okay. So what'll happen is, Iraq will put itself back together, and we'll start exporting oil, and then the value of the dinar will go up, and then I'll be rich. I'll right. have made a lot of money by doing nothing. Right. That is the equivalent of the medieval sack. The emotion behind it that that's the connection. Going, hey, I invaded these people's territory, but I could have got shot by an arrow. Uh, I deserve. I. It, it's my right. I won. Right. We won the war, so I have the right to loot their shit. Yeah. And right. whether you're doing it as a medieval guy with a club in a city somewhere and or an American soldier getting back home and going, oh, fuck, you know, my life still sucks. I want to be rich. That's why I joined the military. So I'm going to do this DNR scheme. And, of course, they're getting fleeced. You know? Right. Right. But it's it's yeah, the I same think the emotion. The guy with the club probably does better with his uh, candlesticks and goblets. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah, and his tapestries that he's clutched yeah, and he's scurrying away. Harder to sh harder to ship, but yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same emotion. It's the same humanity is the same. It's an it's a infinitely faceted gem that's just turning one click at a time, 
and reality shines through it and puts the same personality types projected on a wall. You know, the king kings are the same, whether it's Bronze Age or today. Oh, well, yeah, well, now you're getting sort of... I don't know, man. You experience yeah. your emotions and a few abstract thoughts. You know, I'm I'm scientifically literate, but I'm not mathematically. I can't do that, so... But I have, you know, you when you think about the objective world around you, even the bread and a pumpkin and a beer, it's just something happening to your brain. Right. I think even, I mean, I, I shouldn't speak on it because I'm not a uh, n- neuroscientist, an anthropologist, or yeah. or in anything other. But like, uh, even the mathematicians, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they experience reality fundamentally different. Exactly, physiologically, like yeah. even the, even they get the, hungry. the folks that uh, yeah, yeah. Um, have a, a, a you know an intellect that is capable and experience and time put in um, long enough to yeah. to to think about the universe a little bit differently, being mathematicians or physicists right. or biologists. Yeah, yeah. Um, they still have the same flavor of brain and yeah. mind. Yeah. For the most part that I do, and I'm I'm not sure we're evolved to be yet evolved to th- yeah. think. Yeah, a different kind of consciousness. Yeah, yeah, scares me. That's why I'm scared. I mean, the- there might be another like a uh, yeah. Imagine imagine a humanoid that's uh, more prone to um, yeah, it's frightening mathematical thinking yeah. than it is to sort of these um, I don't know whatever we do, which yeah. is. Fairly, mostly emotional. Emotional. Mostly, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, we got big brains. We think of ideas, but then, you know, yeah. we sack cities and yeah. have these archetypes. Uh, I mean, according to you, the uh, infinitely faceted jewel, but it's the same yeah. sort of clicking, but but it's just sort of a rotation <laughs> of ar- archetypes. Uh, yeah. Oh, we got the fighter. We got the, ro- you know, we got a priest. We got a. Yeah. Honest to God. I not do. to try and paint you there, but. Um, I think it's kind of I you know it is kind of fair uh I you know like I Are we go- yeah are we good at math? I don't know. Not that good. Not that good. We didn't evolve the big brain in order to be good at math. Right. It wasn't like cavemen were right, doing Right, right, right. We evolved a big brain for something else. Yeah, to interact with other big brains and have lots of babies and being smart tends to be sexy. It's evolved to outsmart other brains. Right, so these other sort of um 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 uh hobbies <laughs> that's not the word i was yeah. looking for but that's why mathematicians are weird they're and yeah, not they're, normal they're hijacking um yeah. machinery that mm-hmm. was designed evolved, evolved for something else yes to do some really cool stuff absolutely it's cool. uh but it's uh not what the tool is meant for correct yes yes science You're is fighting, a... fighting uphill in a way yes uh, the scientific method and mathematics is an accident, right. not the purpose of the evolution. That the, the evolution well, has the, the same goal. F- yeah, <laughs> that's sort of a I know, jump, I, of, jump of scales. But does the same go for language, I or mean, is that would, arguable? You know, no, uh, no, because I mean, language. Humans are language. Take away the language, and you're not a human being. Not really. So it's one talking one brain that happens to be <laughs> operating you know it doesn't matter what the la- sign language right. bro right. it doesn't have to be verbal right. language right. so piloting the language and then the the language takes off right everything outsmarting everything another. after that yeah is the uh that's why like kind of a crude country bumpkin like cleverness of like i outsmarted the sheriff or something or i doubled back on my tracks or i ran down the street that's why we really get a kick out of that the same reason we really get a kick out of like I, I've said this before, but like the the video game trope of like teams of people taking down a big animal, a big monster. Well, uh, why the fuck do you think that happened yeah. to a mammal hunting mammoths and mastodons and giant rhinos I mean, that's on the step? Literally Yeah. We're like re- one of the three things I know about World of Warcraft is like uh, if you actually play it, you go on raids with your friends. Yep. A team. Uh huh. It's six to ten people, or three to eight people. Yep. To do a dungeon raid, there's a big boss at the end. Yep. 
I might be showing my ass here. The but. only difference is that you don't chop him up and cook him over a fire <laughs> at the end. But <laughs> you split the XPs. Yep. I'm sure you get some sweet, sweet experience yes. points out of that. We're Probably get some loot. We're recreating the Pleistocene in a digital <laughs> arena. We're recreating the Pleistocene in a digital arena. I've been hunting. It's incredibly emotionally compelling. Yeah. With my uncles and whatnot, and got and like I can't I can't do it anymore. I would never ever do it with strangers, but white American guys get really fucking weird when they say they're gonna go hunting or whatnot. I I can't do it. I I, I find it it at this point it's hideous to even think about. But like because simultaneously I'm like it's very important to me, and so I can't fucking stand it to see somebody pretend to hunt. Uh, and then, but then on the other hand, even when it's actually doing what it should be doing, I find it kind of disturbing because mm -hmm. I've also farmed and like, I've seen plenty of animals suffer and I've caused a lot of animals to suffer very needlessly hunting as a, as a younger person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, human beings are a hunting species and guys, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck do you think a platoon is in the military? It's, it's a hunting party, you know? We recreate that over and over again because it's very fundamental to our physio our evolved right, it's physiology. Baked in. We can't we can't get rid of it. No coincidence you see it happen over and over. No, far from it. And like I guarantee you, if we had been a herbivorous species, the video games would look a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard. Gorillas are herbivorous. They're they're vegetarian. It's a vegetarian great ape, right? They would not make video game they've got thumbs folks and they've got big brains and big bodies give them a few million years they could look you know they could evolve into something much more magnificent than us we're kind of the hairless bonobo oh, yeah what would their video games look like a gorilla you know like it'd probably be like i don't even know building a nest for the night or something <laughs> small family groups one dominant male i mean whew. here we are the human question the imagined, the imagined mythological ancestor who justifies what you wanted to do anyway. It's got nothing to do with the actual historical reality of what even that ancestor was doing. Fuck, I don't care what, oh, I don't actually care what Thomas Jefferson wanted. I know what I want, but I'm going to fob off responsibility onto him. Man, so silly. Is it? I mean, obviously. It's who we are. And it's hard to sit there and just be like, yep, it's going to, you know. And that's what's so cool. You know, like, I couldn't. Do I know the name? I, I know the names of a few. Nobody. See, when you have an actual break, when you have a strong break in continuity, a really strong one. Like a dark age? Yeah, yeah. But even worse than the the one with Rome. See, see it it can't be so distant that it's not completely irrelevant. You have to grab a, enough elements, enough memes from that culture you're going to use as the excuse for what you're already doing. See. So it can't be so distant that it's irrelevant. So, um that's why nobody says nobody uses the Hittite Empire, even though it lasted 500 years, bro. Um, nobody uses the Hittite Empire to justify anything done. You know, and nobody says, well, what was the government structure and the intent of the Hittite founding fathers? Right? Because we've, the break was too great on that. So I guarantee you a couple thousand years from now, somebody might be using the American Republic to justify the evil they want to do. Ted Cruz. Well, Ted Cruz had the intent of this when he, you know, broke away from. Oh, I don't even know. The, right. The, 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 the ripples in the pond of these fucking guppies aren't. Fair I, enough. I hope won't even. Yeah. Fair enough. But like, oh Christ! Um, in the, in that ruling from horseback book, I mean, you had barbarians debating about Chinese emperors. Like you had, th this is the Jurchen. This is the Manchu people who are created. You know, they're an invented people. <laughs> uh, 
sitting there debating like who was the greatest Chinese em emperor, you know, Wu Di of Han or Taizong of Tang. And this is barbarians being forced into the narrative of the people they conquered. Mm, That's right. how potent China is. So don't fuck with it because they've never had a break in their continuity. And I, I don't claim to understand how they do it. You know, like I'm, that's a nut I'm still working on cracking and I don't think I ever really will be able to, you know, but like people still talk about King Solomon in mm -hmm. Western Civ or King David. And like the evidence for King David is scant. Yeah. There's like one piece of clay that I mean, maybe had his name on it and, and that and the scriptures themselves. And so you're right. sitting there fucking. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. Well, doesn't mean, it? Doesn't yes. matter. Yep, because it's a story. Exactly, it's a parasitic right. story yeah. that it's fulfills an... the heroic narrative. Yeah, Jesus Christ, you know. Well, yeah, not a lot of evidence for that guy either. Nope, <laughs> it is there. So yeah, to a certain extent, you know. Being... But also, again, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, and nobody who's telling stories about Shupilulima or Mercialist, even though. Some of those, I mean, those, the Hittites really went through a lot Shupi of stuff. Lulima? Shupi Lulima, yeah. What a nice name. Mercially the same. I was thinking earlier, Alil would actually be a pretty badass yeah. uh, name for a, a baby girl. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> really nerdy. I was looking up, yeah, no reason. that's really nerdy. Really nerdy, but I was looking up, like, <laughs> anyone, uh, people name their name, uh, anyone name their, uh, their kids Kepler? Found oh. only a couple, only a couple. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, here, little vignette, Adam Friedland. <laughs> but uh, they were, it's really funny. They projected themselves as like a very diplomatic and peace, relatively peaceful people. It's really funny. The Egyptians, the Hittites, the Hittites yeah. yeah. Uh, the Egyptians were not very good at war, but they projected themselves as if they were. The The pharaoh is always in a smiting pose. He's always smiting foreigners. You can see it in your mind, Tuthmosis. The, the foreigner has his head, he's on his knees. The pharaoh is grabbing him by the hair, and he's about to smash him in the face with a mace. Oof. Even though the Egyptians were always getting their butts kicked. All, I mean, it was like oh, they really only had one really good military period and only one really famous military leader. Well, yeah, Tothmosis the third. The Hittites Did you were say almost tough. Tothmosis, oh, oh. born of Toth, I'm born gonna, of wisdom. I'm, I'm going to call him Tothmosis. Sure, <laughs> he was. He was. He's my favorite pharaoh. Um, oh man, you should I don't even have a favorite pharaoh. His Fuck. tomb in the Valley of the Kings homework. is an incredible piece of art. It's very abstract, like the the figures of the gods Osiris and Anubis and all that are painted in a very kind of gm almost as if they were letters it i'll, wow. I'll show you the pictures Neat. when we're done yeah. it's so good his tomb's incredible and he you know conquered the levant but uh the hittites projected themselves as these diplomatic folks and they had a diplomatic core and they would translate everything into multiple like 11 languages in their capital you know akkadian and you know cuneiform and well well akkadian and assyrian and babylonian but they were very good at war, but they projected them. They didn't yeah. project themselves publicly as that, but like their army was fucking very intense. Well, that's and the old, uh, very effective speak softly. And yeah, it was like, yeah, that's a way to say it. Yeah. 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 So, because they never, they came close to unifying all of Anatolia, but they never quite did. And so they always had these, uh, excuse me, pockets of lands. They didn't completely control in their periphery. So they always had trouble at the frontier, and it's like, just go to the sea. Go all the way to the sea. What are you waiting for? But they didn't, you know. Hmm. They probably couldn't. But. <laughs> Came and went. Came and went. Let them rest in... See, we let the Hittites rest in peace. We don't drag their corpse out and have to flog it to, to let it say that this is what we... This is what we want to do because Mershali did this. But we do fucking do that with the Romans. And you'll notice... There's another break. See, I know I'm talking specifically kind of about the current American Western narrative. We talk about the Romans and then the Renaissance and all and the rise of, you know, the rising out of the darkness of the Dark Age. 
But then we very conveniently, and, and colonialism and the finding of the Americas and all that, because it fits that narrative. But then we very conveniently don't care at all about the war of Austrian succession, the, the Seven Year War, the war of Spanish succession, right? All of that European history goes away. Well, are they Western too or not? Well, uh, they were just waiting for us to take them over at the end of World War II, right? See? So who's more Western? Who's closer, who's closer to the Roman legacy? Western Europe or the United States? Hmm, right? It's just so fucking false. And, and when you have a false narrative at the core of your identity, your psychic, you know, your psychological... Because if we're not Western, then what are we, right? Right, right. That's uh, difficult. You know, it's a house built on the sand. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's, I mean, honest to God, that's part of the confusion confronting Americans right now because we don't know who we are and we don't know what we are. Partly because we, and it's not the only reason, but one big reason is we've been fed a very false narrative that goes straight from Athens to Rome to right. Washington, D.C., which is horseshit. It's been hollow. Yeah. May, pretty much the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And Poor then, us. <laughs> yeah. Boo hoo. And, and, you know, they're, we're starting to discover new narratives out of the blue because yeah. all narratives are human creations. Right. You had there's Venice, the Republic, the free Republic lasted a thousand years. They created a narrative. They said, well, we're the Romans who took refuge in the lagoons and we've never been conquered by barbarians. And here we go. <laughs> they don't need to be told what to do by some historical something. They decided that they, had never been conquered by barbarians, even though they were all refugees. <laughs> so what are you then? Well, we're refugees. I refu- like that spin, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a good spin. I mean, a city based on refugees or former slaves, that's a good city, you know. Mm-hmm. It, 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 and, um, yeah. And they flourished for a thousand years, and then they faded away. A thousand years, though. That's... No revolutions. During that whole republic, rule of law. Wow. Steady. Swear That's to God. Impressive. Yeah. There was like on, there were even very few attempts. There were like two attempts. The Venetians. Venetians. The Venetian Republic. Wow. Steady rule of law. Clear you know, it it could be a bit tyrannical sometimes, but not nearly as bad as people think. It, it got a bad reputation, bad secret police, the bridge of sighs and the lion mouth gate. We you, you could secretly denounce anybody <laughs> to the secret police but they were careful Oof. about it yeah. yeah they they really were because it's like we're not going to let anybody subvert the republic and they were clever from time to time and there had there were no revolutions and they weren't conquered by foreigners until napoleon gunpowder he, he napoleon was able to shell them from the mainland and a thousand years is a long fucking time pretty good one fiftieth of yeah not bad Motherfuckers, of, of modern humans, yeah, right? and arguably what more. Are we 50, we're fifty grand, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. that's not a small fraction. No, and they fought. Which I'm always saying, you know, it's sort of funny that, um, yeah, there have been, I think, at least two governors that were from the movie Predator. <laughs> And one out of twenty. I mean, that's two out of fifty. Yeah, one yeah. twenty, one twenty fifth of our governors. I think at the same time. Think of it this way: we're predator stars. The, yeah, <laughs> Jesse Ventura <laughs> and Arnold. I think we're serving at the same time. Anyway, I'm just saying, one twenty fifth, not a, not a small fraction. No. Yeah. Okay, think of it this way: written language is only five thousand years old. <sighs> they had a thousand year chunk of that. God damn. That's pretty good. Marco Polo. The Crusade. No, that's not. No, the you say of, Marco, I say. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you understand how this game works. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Marco Polo. No. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, not, I, you know, I, and you can say it's even longer because Napoleon was, what, like 1799? I, you know, they were. Attila the Hun to Napoleon. 
that's the window for the Venetian peoples. And yet it, it gets hazy at the beginning. They built a fucking city on the water. They went down the Adriatic, cut big goddamn trees and sunk them vertically and built a city on top of it. That's pretty good. That's, I mean. Also, uh, ridiculous. Hell yeah. Don't do that. Fuck yeah. Dude, I, the audacity the, of these that's Venetians. That's what I was going to say. The audacity. <laughs> so, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not hostage to stupid narratives and 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 the living giving up their current responsibilities and the imagination they could apply to the dead the dead are dead let them rest in peace fair enough